the confirmed cases have crossed 5 lakh. The world's biggest cities are shut. Stock markets are in free fall. The Wuhan virus has triggered an unprecedented crisis in human history. The sheer scale of it is unnerving. One virus has disrupted the whole world. And this leads us to a question. Is the Wuhan virus the world's biggest intelligence failure? Did no one see it coming? Were these countries too complacent? By the time the world swung into action, the virus had already crossed most borders. And now everyone is playing catch up. Well, almost everyone. There is one country that seems to have an edge right now. The home country of the Wuhan virus, that is China. There is no doubt that China was hit for weeks, that Chinese people suffered. But now China says it has contained the threat. So it's closing down borders and opening up businesses. Fewer cases are being reported. Factories are up and running again. Businesses will take time to revive, but they have made a start. Companies are being encouraged to make coronavirus supplies. They're making equipment other countries might need to fight the outbreak. Gloves, masks, personal protection equipment, even ventilators. So first China put the world in ICU, and now it is selling them ventilators. Is China profiting from this outbreak? As I said, the people of China have gone through unspeakable misery. Thousands have died, they've suffered. But big business and the government now stands to gain in China. And if this sounds too sinister a plot, look at this. This is a book written in 1999, and this could offer clues into the Chinese mindset. It's called Unrestricted Warfare, China's Master Plan to Destroy America. It's a book on military strategy. It was written by two Chinese generals, Kiao Liang and Wang Xiangzu. The book makes an argument. It says that China cannot defeat America in a direct military confrontation, but it can leverage its economic prowess to leave the Americans behind. Now, the book's assessment has some eerie similarities with the present situation. It is being quoted by conspiracy theorists. They claim that amid this coronavirus crisis, Beijing is executing its world domination plan. On this show, we do not go by conspiracy theories to make our assessments, so we set out to look for the facts. What we found was most interesting, and we have that for you tonight. Let's first talk about the situation in China. What is happening in China right now? Restaurants, zoos, even the Great Wall is open to tourists. Not foreign tourists, because they may bring back the virus. But the Chinese are out and about. As we say in television, they're moving towards normalcy. Restrictions are being lifted. Factories are coming back online. Businesses have resumed in many parts of China. At this rate, China's businesses will be up and running in a few weeks not without government help. Like most countries, China too has announced a relief package to revive the economy. Uh, uh, communicated the figure of uh, a totality of uh, 344 billion US dollars uh, in terms of uh, uh, mainly fiscal uh, measures. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we try to stabilize the Chinese economy. And uh, uh, with the uh, measures uh, we have started to take, uh, uh, with the return of the work of the workers and the resumption of production, productive activities uh, by the factories across the country, I think uh, the Chinese economy is coming back to life. Coming back to life. They have a plan to revive the economy. What does this tell you? While major countries are struggling, China is already making a head start. China also has an interesting pattern. Look at this map. This is Wuhan and the rest of China. The coronavirus outbreak in China is what this map details. Now, some of the biggest cities in China were largely insulated from the outbreak. I say this is interesting because while the virus spread and unleashed chaos in the remotest corners of the world, it couldn't do much damage in China's top cities. I'll give you examples with numbers. Let's start with Beijing. Beijing has recorded more than 500 cases. Eight people died in the city. 
Do you know what's the population of Beijing? 2.15 crores. Shanghai reported 468 cases with 5 deaths. Shanghai has a population of 2.4 crores. Among the 10 most densely populated cities in the world, only 5 deaths, less than 500 cases. The point I'm making is that China's financial hubs have largely emerged unscathed from this crisis. They can bounce back quickly. They're boosting business by creating opportunities. What does the world need right now? Personal protection equipment, masks, they're in short supply. Guess who's filling the gap? Chinese companies already at work to supply to the world. According to a report, almost 9,000 new manufacturers started producing masks in China this year. They began business in the first two months of 2020. China's daily mask production has crossed 116 million now. Many companies have overseas orders. They're selling outside China. One of the biggest companies is Dawn Polymer. This is a Chinese company. It supplies the fabrics used to make masks. Dawn Polymer has a 40% market share in China. And the value of its shares, the company's shares, has shot up by, listen to this, 417% since January, 417% in three months. The holdings of the company's founders now stand at a whopping $1.9 billion. The coronavirus crisis has only meant good news for their business. Here's another example of China creating opportunities from the crisis. Buying out distressed assets. Case in point, Australia. The Scott Morrison government is worried about Chinese companies taking over Australian businesses. Reports say Australia's Foreign Investment Review Board is now gearing up. Why? Because they fear takeover attempts from China. Distressed Australian businesses and assets are on China's radar. It's not just Chinese companies that stand to gain. Foreign companies based in China are also back in action. BMW's factories resumed operations in February itself, last month. Fiat Chrysler has also restarted production. Foxconn has resumed work in its mainland China factories. Foxconn manufactures for leading tech giants like Apple and HP. Tesla's factory in China is back online too, reportedly with help from local authorities. Members of the Chinese government allegedly helped Tesla secure key supplies. The Chinese government is going the extra mile to make sure businesses resume operations. In Shanghai, most foreign businesses are back in action. All foreign-funded enterprises have resumed operation, with an 80% employee return rate and a 70% business resumption rate. The overall situation is steadily improving. So while it sounds crass to say that a company or a country profits from a pandemic, these are the bitter facts. China exported a virus to the world. Now the world is sick and China is selling them the balm. And while the world tries to heal, China is already up and running.